Pajamas and James continued to play a significant role in the popularity of ukulele in Nova Scotia. And now it seems like every corner you turn, there's someone with a uke ready to play you a tune. Welcome, see you later. Have a good day. Yeah, you too, see ya. People ask me why I would drag a ukulele around with me when I could just sit there and look at my phone or read a book or any number of things. It calms me down. Um, it calms the people around me down. My name is Peter Stevenson and I'm a ukulele playing bus driver. I usually play like a little bit of blues. I got a little blues thing that I practice. You know, that, you know, the kind of jazzy stuff. Whatever's easy. It's gotta be easy, because I'm not that great a player. I just get up every morning and I take this thing and jam it into my bag and I take it to work. If I arrive at a station early, I'll uh, pull it out and play a few tunes while I'm sitting there waiting with, with passengers in the bus. And it's just a good way to uh, pass, you know, a spare three and a half minutes. Um, you can just practice a little bit. It's right there. It's easy to, to pull out, play, put it right back, get back to my work. It's, I don't, I don't lose any time and I don't lose, uh, I don't lose my focus on my driving or my job. We have a lot of people that played ukulele in school or their brother played or their sister played or they've got one home in the closet. If somebody seems to be very interested, I will just hand it over and say, give it a try. You know, it's, it's important for them to know that this is not a precious thing, that this is something that, uh, you know, it's a democratizing instrument. Anybody can play it. Anybody can learn to play it, and you don't need to be afraid of it or uh, worried about it. Ready? A one, two, a one, two, three, four. This My name is Angela Dwyer and I am the director of the Marigold Ukulele Players, which is a group that meets here at the Marigold Center in Toronto, Nova Scotia weekly. And we've been in existence now for several years. We kind of just evolved. Now we're a full-fledged group of adult players with varying musical backgrounds. And we do have a beginner session that people can take. It's an eight-week session to get them ready to join the group. They come from all kinds of different musical backgrounds. Some have never, ever read a note of music. Um, some have had background and, you know, have played other instruments or whatever. But it all, you know, comes together. And what I say to my group is that we're all on our own musical journeys, so never compare yourself to who you're sitting next to. Great, that got the cobwebs out. <laughs> the group I'm going with and you guys stay here. And everybody else, do you want to go find a little spot? And we will see you. Today we're breaking off into small groups. The groups want some time to practice before next week. The ukulele players have been working hard, rehearsing songs for an upcoming concert. Part of our mandate as a group is twice a year we split off into small groups, trios, quartets, sometimes five people. Too hot. And we go out into the community and we give home concerts to people that are not able to leave their home. I know your dad would be welcome yes, and happy to have welcome. us. At first, when I had the idea to do it, everybody was really nervous to do it, obviously, because they're going as groups of three or four, so they're thinking they don't have that security of having 20 other people around them. Hi, come on in. Oh, out there. Oh, it is, yeah. Dad's excited. All oh, good. <laughs> someone asks you, play your ukulele for me, you don't want to say, oh, I need my group, I need my 20 other people around me in order to play. You know, you want to be able to play. And that's all part of the enjoyment of music. You're a World War II vet, are you? I was a Telega wireless operator. You had to uh, copy, copy. copy all the wireless all the messages wireless. that they, they sent from the shore, from the shore. Oh, they I see. Sent. An important job. It was yeah. definitely an important job. Yeah. This is one we used to sing up at our place when we had a few little kitchen parties at our place. Oh, yes. My mom and her sister 
used to get up and sing and have a little dance when they sang oh, this. Oh, oh, yeah. Dancing is one of his favorite things. Yeah. He's always liked to dance. Oh, wow. <laughs> you could dance if you want. Is there an extra girl? <laughs> I'll dance with you. <laughs> Please don't take my green hair away. The other It's a wonderful experience and we really feel like we've had an impact on that person's day. We get closer to Remembrance Day this weekend. It's been a huge honor for me to play for you today. It's one of the most satisfying things that we do. And when they come back here and we all get together, they have more confidence because they can go out in a small group now and do their own thing. What if I told you? that 60 ukulele players meet up and jam at the Celtic Corner in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. I think you'd want to play along. My name is Mike Dybo and tonight is our monthly hug get-together. Hug stands for the Halifax Ukulele Gang. Gang because it's tougher. When Mike isn't playing the ukulele professionally, he's playing the ukulele for fun. I formed it thinking, well, this is Chalmers Dones land, Nova Scotia. Surely there's a ukulele group I can just get together with once a month and jam. And there wasn't. I put out a call back probably 10 years ago, and there was myself, uh, Craig Ferguson, and two other people showed up, and we were the only ones probably for about a year, and they put us in a snug here. And now there's, you know, we've topped up at 60 people. I'm Jonathan Grady and we have the uh, Halifax Ukulele Gang meeting. I got involved about three months after it, after it started, bringing music each month to the gathering. Some songs worked, a lot of songs didn't. You know, that you can hear it in the background now. <laughs> it's a large group and they're working together and they're you know, showing each other techniques and chords and sitting there and just having fun. because you know in that room we will get seniors who are in their 70s or 80s coming out uh, at the same time with you know people who are in high school or university or you know kids who are here with their parents so I think just to see that wide variety of ages come out uh, sit down and sing some songs play together it's it's just a whole lot of fun and it's, it's just a really great experience. Hi Mark can you? I think it works really well because uh, if you're not that good, you can just follow along and the good players drown you out. <laughs> so you, so the, as a group, it sounds, it always sounds not too bad. I think it's an instrument that you can make really good connections with people. People in the Halifax Ukulele Gang have made a lot of friends that they, people they would have never crossed paths with before. I think in many ways it might it might suit the, the personality of a, of Nova Scotians. It's kind of laid back. It, it goes well with beer, and uh, you always play it in a, in a setting like a pub. And so, yeah, maybe it's just a natural fit. I mean, it, I mean, it wouldn't be the same if it was a trumpet, right? <laughs> see Halifax Ukulele Gang go from, you know, a couple of people sitting around one table to getting to the point where we've got 60 people crammed into this tiny little space and to see everybody just singing and playing and having a wonderful time. When I first came here, I went into a room full of people and I was immediately invited over to sit down beside someone with a book and I could just follow along and I think they character of the people who play ukuleles tend to be that kind of friendly, welcoming type group. It's impressive to hear so many ukuleles playing together. It's like a small rock and roll show. But the audience is also the band. It's loud. It sounds great.
They have fun. And why wouldn't they? Hug is all about friends helping friends learn to play this wonderful instrument. Sixty Ukes is loud, but Hug is even louder, sharing the stage with one of Canada's biggest names in music. I discovered that the ukulele was a little easier than I thought to play as a guitar player. Like you just, you know, pretend there's two strings missing and I kind of, that was the cheap approach. I know that, you know, there's a lot more to it than that. But for me, as like a traveling musician, uh, I would be going on like, so, so like a surf trip somewhere really remote where I couldn't bring up a guitar case, but there was no way in hell I wasn't going to have a musical instrument. So the ukulele was uh, just, it made a lot of sense. And then ever since I, I kind of started playing it, it became sort of more about how awesome the instrument was and not how convenient it was. And I, I would prefer to take a ukulele around with me than, a, than say guitar, you know, just because it's awesome. The ukulele holds a special place in Matt's heart. Back in 2008, he decided to invite the Halifax ukulele gang up on stage for a show. Eight years ago, I played a show in Dartmouth, and uh, it was right around the time I was kind of getting into ukuleles. And it was just so fun to, to, to to have that sort of, you hearing it come in behind you, this beautiful wall of the most, you know, it's such a beautiful, mellow sound. They rocked so hard, he brought them back for a second show. And I thought it'd been a while, so when we did Canada Day show, I got a hold of two Facebook, I got a hold of the gang, and I, lo and behold, like 35 ukulele players showed up. Let's hear it for the ukulele gang. And again, they were split on stage, and it was one of the most beautiful, the crowd just disappeared. I was just too into this beautiful sound. You know, you get one ukulele is beautiful, but you get 35 ukuleles playing together, it's like, it's a forest, you know? It can move mountains. People really like ukuleles, and I wanted the community to be involved in that show, because it was such a huge show, you know? There's like 40,000 people, and you know, it was really special, you know? Third time's a charm, another rock and roll show. Matt Mays and the gang. Quite a few of my songs I've, I've, I think, started or had some sort of incarnation on the ukulele. Um, uh, my song on the hood, was it's like... So that's like a ukulele kind of rhythm, but I just moved it to guitars and then it just, the whole song keeps that rhythm. It all began without warning On a strange winter's morning That was that, and the whole song is again, it's like those four chords the whole way through. And I don't think I would have written that song on a guitar like that, but because I was just messing around with the ukulele and, it, you know, the melody came out, like I said, it was simple and I kind of just followed the melody along. This is one of the first tunes I wrote on ukulele and it's called California Time. The information, help me please. Get me California on the line I left my baby on the western far horizon With a tear in her eye and a half-finished bottle of wine I took a little job out in New York City I've been working like a dog on my rhythm rhyme But oh, how I long for a million margaritas in a beach bike ride I live in New York City but I'm still on California time I live in New York City but I'm still on California time Here I sit like some old forgotten statue down on 7th Street getting covered in snow Oh how I long for the way that golden sunshine of your golden hair I live in New York City, but I'm still on California time. I live in New York City, but I'm still on California time. Let's buy a little house down in Laguna. We'll sit on the sand and watch the sun go down. And maybe then I'll 
I'll take you out dancing Put a buck in the jukebox and we'll kiss in the sway I live in New York City but I'm still in California time I live in New York City but I'm still in California time I live in New York City but I'm still in California time I live in New York City but I'm still in California time That's her. Ukulele music comes in many flavours, and that includes surf music. Mike, from the Halifax Ukulele Gang, is also the front man in a surf band. We've been playing this song in the Urban Surf Kings as a guitar band for like, what, 20 plus years? <laughs> My name is Mike Daibo. I am jamming with the Urban Surf Kings or the ukulele surf kings, we haven't decided yet. <laughs> if you know the urban surf kings, you know this sound. Hey! It's the sound of surf music. And this is the sound of surf music on the ukulele. We play a mixture of surf Urban Surf Kings originals, plus a lot of standard surf tunes like Pipeline, Miserloo, things like that. You'll get um, sort of a, a lower key, but equally fun version of the Urban Surf Kings. You know, we get hired either as the surf band with the big electric instruments and all that stuff, or we get hired as a ukulele group. I think people like it. I mean, if we're playing like at a ukulele uh, workshop or ukulele festival, it's kind of expected. Um, though uh, having a drummer and a bass player not as common. So on drums is my brother, Frank Denhan, also known as Inky in the Urban Surf Kings. Uh, he plays two-piece kit. My kit's never big anyways, you know, like a four-piece with minimal cymbals, but now it's a uh, two-piece. Bass drum, snare drum, occasionally he'll bring a cymbal if the mood strikes him. <laughs> so no cymbal, but not necessary. It's better that way. On bass we have uh, Andrew Baisley, who's known as Crash Flag in the Urban Surf Kings. How you doing? Tuning up as usual. Yes. Never ending process. He plays the U bass, which is a baritone ukulele body with sort of rubbery strings, tuned like a bass, looks like a ukulele. The rubber strings are kind of sticky, so the, the action on it is a little different. The, if you slide or move around, you have to be careful not to squeeze too hard or bend them or roll them over. And rockin' lead ukulele, Mike, <laughs> AKA Reverend Hank. And there's myself on resonator uke and uh, Hawaiian lap uke. There's kind of a, a little bit of an echo that, that carries on and it really, really makes it sound nice and big. The Urban Surf Kings are an instrumental band and that's common for surf music. But to play it all on ukuleles, that's a whole new song and dance. It was really no convincing. It's the same idea. It's like, you know, let's have fun, let's play it. It doesn't matter what it is. It's all music. It's, you know, whatever you choose to, to express yourself with, it's, you know, it's, it's whatever you want. I think instrumental music as, as something to be performed for the general public can often be underrated. If it's got a strong melody, if you're, you know, you're playing well as a group, if there's some excitement on stage, if, the, you know, we're, if you're having fun as a musician and the audience is having fun, then I think it's, it's great. Instead of sort of running over songs that we already knew in preparation of a big show coming up, we had a chance to actually work on some stuff that we can add to the show. Um, like Big Surf at Black Point, we've never done as a ukulele group. And then we came up with this, the new uh, Dale's Train Tango song with the lap uke. And, uh, you know, that was a collective effort. So, uh, you know, that's, that's nice. We've got a tune that all of us have written. And uh, I think that's going to be a staple. While it's just some wood and four nylon strings, this beloved instrument packs a punch. And just as much love goes into the building of a ukulele as playing it. From a simple triangle to a work of art. <laughs> Only time for the top. One, two, three. 